go. The starters in the 12th Annual International Trophy Race at Silverstone on 150 miles of really fast motoring. And somewhere well up with the leaders is the man we've come to meet, Jack Brabham, world champion driver and a mechanic of rare skill who knows all there is to know about tuning and preparing racing cars. He and Cooper's engineers have worked many weeks getting this new model ready for its first appearance at the practice for the race. The car is very much lower slung than before. There is a new gearbox and the rear suspension has been redesigned using coil springs for the first time. All racing cars are, of course, fitted with disc brakes. But Coopers were one of the first to use them on Grand Prix cars. Jack is always around personally to supervise any last minute adjustments. And with him, as always, is a Cooper mechanic, affectionately known as Ginge. Many people regard the practice as more important than the actual race. And there are always enthusiasts willing to pay for the privilege of watching it. But when the car is new, like this one, then the practice is doubly important. For it is then the driver makes himself familiar with the behavior of the car on a particular circuit, finds out when to brake, when to change down, and which line to take when cornering. Every driver is out to register a fast time because his best lap speed will determine his position on the starting grid. During one of his earlier practice runs, Jack actually set up a new unofficial lap record of 1 minute 34 seconds beating the existing record by six seconds. This means his average speed for the circuit was around 112 miles an hour. In this practice, in pouring rain, lap times were considerably slower. But even so, road holding and cornering were very good. With such promise for a faster than ever race before them, everyone hoped that the day of the race would be fine. And so it was. For the sun shone out of a blue sky onto the thousands of motor race fans who came to see this dress rehearsal for the first European race in the championship series to be held a fortnight later at Monaco. There was always an enthusiastic group round the Cooper tender to catch a glimpse of the two new Cooper cars and to watch the final preparation. Not that there was much to be done at this late stage, except perhaps a little polishing, for the scrutineers had already made their inspection and put on their seal. Three minutes to go. Three to go. Over on the grid, officials and mechanics were crowding round the cars as they were being pushed into position. Jack eases himself into his car, which looks for all the world as if it had been built round him. <laughs> which indeed it had. Here's Sterling Moss checking over his car and testing the suspension, which was later to let him down. Having satisfied himself that all is well, Jack, looking as imperturbable as ever, clambers out for the briefing. takes the lead in the early stages with Innes Ireland in second place and Jack lying third. <laughs> Meanwhile in the pits, his wife acts as timekeeper, for Jack relies on information from his pit to tell who is in front and who is behind him and how many seconds separate them. present at the race, millions are watching it in their homes on television. An interesting point about Jack is that being a first-class mechanic, he seems to become part of the car. He never overdrives it, but rather coaxes it along. When Mosh retired with broken suspension, Ireland moved into first place and Brabham into second. And that's how it stayed till the end of the race. When it's all over, it's back to the pits again and a word with the boss. We'd love to know what Jack whispered in John Cooper's ear, but we shall never know. 
racing thirsty work, and he knocks back a well-earned drink while having a word with his wife. There's a signature for some lucky autograph hunter who gets a world champion for his collection. But not even world champions can win every time. So everyone was more than delighted with the new car's performance against such formidable opposition. This is where we'd like to have interviewed Jack Brabham and the man who builds Cooper cars. But as you see, they were far too busy. We did, however, manage to catch up with them later at the garage in Surbiton, where five years ago, the world-beating association between Jack Brabham and the Cooper Car Company first began. This is where we build our racing cars. And there are literally hundreds of component parts that go to building a racing car. <coughs> and one of the most important of those is the brake lining. And who better to tell you about brake linings than world champion Jack Brabham? Well, as far as racing cars are concerned, it's quite a serious business. And we spend a lot of time and money building racing cars to go as fast as we can. And from the driver's seat, when we're racing, one thing that's probably overlooked by many people or don't seem to realise it, the most important part is being able to stop at the end of a big long straight. And this is one place where we do rely on something that's got to be good. And with Mintex brake linings, which we've been using for some time now, we've had a wonderful run with them, and it doesn't seem to matter how hot they get. Racing just becomes a lot safer as it goes on. And not only have you got to stop, but you've got to keep on doing That's it right. as well. Yes, and we certainly got something to rely on with Mintex. It is John Cooper that makes me go fast, but it's Mintex that I rely on to stop safely. Well, that's what Jack thinks about the importance of brakes in Grand Prix driving. And remember, he talks as a qualified engineer, not just as a brilliant driver. 